Hey guys, thank you for watching. Ivan Blasco is here. Welcome back to another video here. Um, this is a fascinating topic that I'm going to be talking about. First off, I like to do research on um, you know previous topics of interest of mine, and one of them is garlic. Um, and it's you know it's actually my most popular video as well. It's got over half a million views. I think it's 509,000 right now, and uh, you can see it right there. Uh, but the reason why um, I may bring up garlic is because I wanted to see what the latest research was on garlic, and particularly raw garlic. Um, and so I actually put raw garlic in the search engine on PubMed, and I came up with this study that's called Modulation of Lung Function by Increased Nitric Oxide Production. Now, in no way was raw garlic mentioned, but obviously it popped up for a reason. So I opened it up, I put raw garlic in, in the search engine, and sure enough, they use raw garlic, um, or the equivalent of it, as a supplement for smokers. And they also, I learned something new today, they also mentioned that garlic is the highest, um, it's the best inducer of nitric oxide in the body, or um, nitric oxide synthase. Uh, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's one of the best nitric oxide synthase inducers. Nitric oxide synthase is an enzyme that's needed for the body to um, catalyze and uh, produce nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide, we typically think of it in a favorable way, and it is. However, this led to another thing. So I wanted to look up nitric oxide, and I came across a study that um, showed, uh, the, it was called the regulation of obesity and insulin resistance by nitric oxide. Now, there's a graph that I'm about to show you right now that's really cool, so check it out. So in this graph here, it's really fascinating, okay? So we have three isoforms of nitric oxide synthase, or three of the you know, enzyme forms that kind of lead to nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide synthase one is also known as neuronal nitric oxide synthase. And in this instance, in obese, in obese individuals, it tends to increase food intake. And it's, 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 it re regulates in the brain and um, it's been shown to have an influence on hyperphagia or overeating. So higher levels of it are associated with that, which is fascinating to me. Because I've always thought of nit nitric oxide, you know, uh, ENOS as beneficial, and it is. In fact, it, on the right-hand side, all those anti-obesity and insulin sensitizing benefits are from ENOS, which is endothelial nitric oxide synthase. That's the, that, that takes place in the endothelial. Uh, endothelium, which is the inner lining of our arteries, and pretty much across the board, it's got beneficial effects, right? But what I found fascinating is, if, again, if you look on the left, there are two other isoforms, and the one that seems to be implicated in uh, kind of paradoxical, if you will, or, you know, unfavorable effects is nitric oxide synthase 2. Um, and this is the, this is inducible, it's called INOS, it's inducible nitric oxide synthase. And what that means is it typically occurs in states of inflammation. So it's, to me, it seems like it's the body's fight to turn, to right the ship, if you will, or turn things around. In an obese state, you tend to have pro-inflammatory markers and just a high inflammation status. And so they're gonna have these high NOS2 levels. Um, so they, they, they tend to be inhibited in NOS3 but they tend to have elevated levels of NOS2 or, or so forth. Fascinating stuff, uh, but what does this all mean? Well, we can look back and say, well, garlic is a potent um, ENOS or NOS3 inducer, and so in a sense, garlic is, increases fat burning, because if you look at one of the benefits, increases fat oxidation. So you see how it's all connected, and I just find that to be so fascinating. It's like one one subject leads to a, leads to a trail, uh, just many trails. And I think the, the, the thing that really I want to talk about is simply that all things that are, you know, healthy tend to work together. And it's all connected in some way, as you're about to see in this next slide. All right, so I'm going to spare you the details on this, because um, quite frankly, I don't understand all of it. But I will say this. I want, you, I want, to, I want to direct your attention to the... the, the Three words in bold, obesity, nutrient, excess. I'm gonna go ahead and put the card up right now so you can see, I just did a video on anti-nutrient autophagy, and this is courtesy of Dr. Rhonda Patrick's video on autophagy, and she talks about nutrient deprivation 
increases autophagy. Well, here we have a graph showing obesity nutrient excess and all of the negative um, physiological effects that it induces. So again, obesity is, is like a myriad of, of physiological dilemmas and mishaps and issues. And quite frankly, it's complex, but at the same, and which is why there needs to be questioning and constantly reassessing to make sure um, you know, progress is being made and, and, and slowly but surely. And really behavior modification is most important here. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, guys. So basically, I just wanted to make this video to, um, basically I just wanted to make this video to let you guys know that everything is connected in some way or another. All of these videos, it's like, it's kind of like they're just snowballing in a positive way. Every one that I may have been making, hopefully if you've been following, if not, um, that's fine too. Uh, you're more than welcome to go back and look at these videos. I card them and these videos for reasons to show that, you know, this is all connected. And just, it continues to validate and confirm a lot of my logic and my reasoning that's evidence-based. And um, someone commented on my video, the 36 minute one that I did on uh, oxalates, which you can see right there. Uh, again, I know 36 minutes is a long time, but he makes a point in that this is like a, a quality reference video. In other words, people can come back to it. And you know what? I said, you know what, that's true, including myself. Like I've got a whole list of kidney stone preventers or inhibitors. I've got factors, uh, evidence-based factors that are associated with reduced risk of kidney stone formation. A lot of people probably didn't know that because if you didn't see it, it's not in the title. The title just says, um, plant oxalate debate, you know, the stone cold truth. It's a nice play on words, I get it, alliteration. Um, but you know, for those who didn't see it, I highly uh, encourage you to see it because I've got, it's chuck full of, I think it's, I think it's probably the most in-depth um, oxalate kidney stone video on YouTube right now. And I, and, I'm, and I mentioned that in my comment to him because I'm gonna go back and look at it. In fact, after I made that video, guess what I started doing? I started, I started um, adding a little more lemon to my water uh, whenever I get a chance. Now, I, it's, a, it's a habit that I do at restaurants because I always think, well, if I add lemon to the water, it's gonna reduce the glycemic load and index, right? So you have a slower glucose elevation, which means you have more fat oxidation, right? It's kind of like a, a, a fluctuation of substrate oxidation there. It's a relationship. But now we have the added benefit of the reduced risk of kidney stone formation. So the hits keep on rolling. The hits keep on coming. And so uh, for those of you who watch my videos, uh, again, uh, I, I applaud you and uh, thank you for taking the time. So again, this video, just tying it all together, guys, is that number one, this adds more credence to my garlic um, video. And in my video, I show you how, I show how to eat it in its most potent form, the raw state. And I actually still do that. It's, it's, I've still, I, I, I do it. Like, and the funny, funny thing is, uh, they, this is the first study that referenced Livestrong. And uh, I went to Livestrong and they talked about a University of Maryland suggested that one doesn't have to eat garlic every day. In fact, it was like, I think it was like three or four days a week, maybe two, two to four days a week. And it was like significant benefits, like reduced risk of like gallbladder cancer, or stomach cancer and esophageal and so forth. Just fascinating stuff. Um, so again, this video was mainly to kind of talk about garlic and how a, a new a newfound benefit of it being uh, one of the highest um, ENOS activators, which is gonna lead to obviously boost nitric oxide production. And I will tell you anecdotally, uh, whenever I have garlic and I, I typically have a low body fat, I can I could see like like vascularity in my arms, like literally within like half an hour. And it's just like, to me, it's just like, it's just like correlation with my sight and kind of what I'm seeing, like that's gotta be like the potent vasodilatory benefit of garlic. And another thing um, is that it led me to the obesity, nitric oxide's implications in obesity. And so indirectly, if you think about this, garlic may actually be uh, anti-obesogenic or anti-obesity, which is really awesome. Um, and then the, lastly, the uh, obesity nutrient excess, that graph that you saw and how I was talking about nutrient deprivation and how it increases autophagy, which is a catabolic function via fat burning, fat loss. All right. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time. And uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. A lot of information thrown at you. Uh, also, feel free to check out the bottom of the video. I'm going to go ahead and put the, st the studies that, uh, that I based this video off of. And as always, thanks for watching. Tune in next time.